I very much know the difficulty at times, or sometimes the excitement, of being able to work with scientists and then sometimes being the conduit between scientists through the digital matrix to a planetarium show or even just live visualisation. So I think it cannot be underestimated, the role that you played in this show, transforming what came from the scientists through to um, what we end up seeing on the screen. So again, I think you deserve very much a round of applause. I thought that I would perhaps hand it to the audience. If you maybe had any questions about the production process, I think I'll hand over to Vipka and you can ask away. Thank you. So this was a first ever nationally um, that we are actually launching, or that we're able to launch a planetarium show on the same night across planetaria. Um, because we, we actually wrote that into the, the funding agreement with Museum Victoria to make sure that it's free to distribute to all of the members of the Australasian Planetarium Society. Um, so tonight, uh, the venues who launched were Sydney Observatory, that was at 5 p.m. their time, so they were actually the first to launch. Then Museum Victoria with the main launch event, obviously, at 6.30 their time. And Adelaide launched um, also tonight, I'm not quite sure what their time was, and, and then us. So we were the four planetaria across Australia who launched tonight. Wollongong Planetarium will launch um, the day after tomorrow. And uh, so all of the uh, planetaria that I've just uh, mentioned, they, it's sort of at their discretion when they're starting their public screening. So I know from Carly they've definitely scheduled it for the school holidays. And before it's kind of, you can wing it as you wish. Um, Melbourne is uh, screening it as of tomorrow, 2.30, for their first school session, and a couple of schools have already booked into it. So it's, it's going to be screened twice daily, so schools have already booked into the next couple of sessions, which is great. Um, and um, Wollongong will show from that launch date of the 23rd, and Adelaide, I think, also launching, uh, well, launch today, but uh, showing from the school holidays onwards. And the other planetaria were a bit sort of undecided in terms of when I asked them, like, oh, come on, give me your dates. Uh, they were a bit um, hesitant, um, but it's pretty much, it's spreading now. And obviously, um, it's also uh, available to portable planetaria. So anyone who's operating the little mobile planetaria, uh, free license to all of those operators as well. Yes, so that will be available, I mean, that will be licensed, so the free distribution is only um, in Australia and New Zealand. It's called Australasian, but it's really Australia and New Zealand. Um, and um, the international sales uh, will be delayed for a couple of uh, weeks or months, mainly because we have a slightly adapted narration. So, uh, especially uh, where Jeffrey is talking about Dover Heights, that's just a little bit adapted to the international audience that might not feel quite as, you know strongly connected to these kind of aspects, but otherwise it's, it's, it's still sort of the same show. I think there will be a lag of, let's say, two months, um, but uh, in, I think, June, there will be two major conferences in Europe. One will be in Jena in Germany, um, for the proper title of the conference, and the other one will be in Warsaw. That's two major planetarium societies where Museum Victoria will send delegates and they'll hope to score some award or the other. Um, so that, that is main, mainly marking the onset of the international distribution. Um, so, for, sort of strictly speaking, um, a year five primary school, which is when it's written into the Australian curriculum. But I think the actual answer is um, kids are interested in astronomy from, well, maybe not day dot when they start lifting flaps and books and stuff, but, you know, quite early and it's, it's just really, it's one of those disciplines that lends itself so well to communicate really early because everyone has some sort of connection, even if you're just talking about the moon and, you know, twinkling stars, it's one of those disciplines that they relate to really strongly, really early. So I think if we're saying year five primary, they're starting to talk about like the Goldilocks zone, like planets that it might be, you know, habitable for human life or human-like life. Um, that's probably already a little bit later than children really taken an active interest. So you know, get them early. Is there any more? I can't see any hands, so I think we're good. No last takers. Speak now. 
Oh, continue the conversation in the four hour. <laughs> um, drinks and nipples. Yeah, drinks and nipples, exactly. Um, 